Yo, how's it going everybody? I am Artorigold, a top 500 support player, and today I wanted to do a Moira Vod review, a character that a lot of people play because she's a lot of fun and she can do a lot of damage. Now, I don't think she offers a whole lot of utility like other characters do, such as Nano, Sleep Dart, Anti, the Speed Boost, you know, all those abilities are extremely helpful in different ways than just healing, and Moira doesn't really offer any of that for her team. Instead, she just kind of has a ton of consistency of raw healing output, a lot of survivability, a lot of people have a tough time killing her, and her damage is pretty good. Now before we really get into it, I need you guys to go ahead and watch this clip. So all joking aside from that clip, it's pretty funny, but as you can see, a lot of people play that way. They just kind of want to DPS and do damage, flank Moira, and while that is pretty fun, it's not how you're going to climb. It's not how you're going to win a lot of your games. So let's go ahead and dive into this VOD review, and we can go ahead and talk about all the little min maxi things you can do, and I can try to maybe convince you that healing with Moira is better than DPSing. Now the first thing that I have to talk about is your shift ability. One of the best things about Moira is her fade. And as you can tell from a tiny little bit of a tech here, I think all of you probably know this already, but if you use your fade and you jump right at the last second, you get a ton of mobility and extra movement while you're in the air because you keep that momentum. If you were to just use your fade and not jump at all, you would get way less distance. So something to remember when fading, Try to jump right at the end if you want to go a little bit farther. Now, one of the things you'll notice right off the bat, and this is something you should be doing as Moira, you should be throwing your damage orb at the beginning of a fight or whenever there is any downtime. Your damage orb will give you ult charge from all of the poke damage, and that is the main reason you throw it. It is for ult charge generation to help you get your coal a little bit quicker. Now, another thing that you'll notice that I am doing here, I am using my left click, but I'm stopping right here. So there are a couple of reasons for that. Obviously, we all know you have this resource meter. This is your left click and you get it by right clicking people and it goes away for holding down your left click. And one of the biggest things about Moira is trying to min max your efficiency. And so one thing you can do with your left click, if you did not know this, and you can kind of tell from this little bit of glowing yellow around him, if you touch an ally with your left click, just for a little bit, it'll add a healing over time effect to the allies and they will actually heal for about 35 health over two seconds after the left click is done. So you can kind of see this in real time here. Let's go ahead and rewind. As you can see at the beginning of the fight, I just tiny little left click, spray them a little bit, and I don't try to fully left click into full health there. And that's because I want to get the min maxing out of my heal over time effect. While 35 HP isn't a whole lot, it's, you know, for a tank anyways, it's extremely good when you're trying to heal any of your squishies. Now, another thing you'll notice here is that I am throwing heal orbs. Heal orbs are going to be way better than throwing your damage orbs in a fight. And there is a very big reason for this. Your damage orb, believe it or not, your damage orb, I'm even going to draw it actually. Your damage orb it does 200 damage at maximum. Whereas your healing orb, it heals 300 health. So as you can tell, your healing orb has way more value than a damage orb in the fight because you have 100 more potential healing rather than 200 potential damage. So that's way more valuable for your team to get that 300 healing. Now, that isn't every case, right? There are going to be some situations where maybe the damage warp is going to be better, and I don't want you to think this is just some sort of propaganda to get you to heal more as Moira, but more often than not, the heal orb is going to be more beneficial for your team than a damage orb is. Keeping your team alive is going to be, also the healing orb is going to make it so you use less of your meter, so you don't have to worry about running out of it because you need to left click less. So a couple of things about the ultimate, I guess we could talk about. When you throw a orb, it has a tiny bit of an animation afterwards. It's not for a very long time. However, if you throw an orb and then use your ultimate, 
it's actually going to be able to cancel that animation with your orb, which is kind of nice, especially if you're trying to combo a heal orb in order to give yourself or your allies a little bit of extra healing or the opposite, the damage aspect, you can use a damage orb and then use your ult in order to try to get a little bit more burst damage. Your ult is extremely effective at killing squishies in the back line. It can go through any shields, which is something your left click normally doesn't do, by the way. If you have a Winston who is on you, an enemy Winston, let's pretend, for example, this is an enemy Winston, right? Um, this is the Winston. He's angry. These are the eyebrows, right? He's trying to kill you. He's inside the bubble. And you have your ally who is also inside the bubble. And he's very sad. And you are outside the bubble. Currently, I'm outside the bubble. My left click healing is not going to reach my ally. It's just not going to happen. So in order to heal allies that are behind or inside barriers, you actually have to go inside the bubble in order for your left click to work. Now that is one of the strengths of Moira though, is that your orb and your ultimate will go through the shield, so your heals will be able to reach him. Um, this is also kind of a interesting dynamic that you have against D.Va. For example, D.Va can eat all of your orbs, which makes it very difficult for you to get the poke damage, which means you'll have a lot less ult charge, same with your healing orbs. However, she cannot block your left click healing, which is a big plus because she can't eat um, you know, Ana heals and stuff like that. So your right click doesn't really do anything to tanks, and especially not because tanks all have armor, or at least most of them do. And if you didn't know, that little yellow thing, the armor, is actually damage reduction. So your right click does pretty much nothing to tanks, um, at least when they are at full health. And also that's another reason why if you are a support player, it's very important to make sure that they have their armor at all times, because it makes it much easier to heal them. Probably noticed, right? Like you've seen a tank who's like half HP and you're just constantly left clicking them as Moira and it's like, why won't he live? Well, that's probably because his armor is gone and that's why it's so hard because he's losing that damage reduction that he used to have. So another interesting thing about your ultimate, I don't really get a whole lot of usage out of it in this instance, but something to kind of pay attention to is when you ult, your resource goes up way quicker. So in theory, if you wanted to, you can use all of your resource, fully pump all your left click into somebody like your tank or whatever and then use your ultimate and you get all of your resource back that's kind of a nice little thing that you can kind of remember if you are like oh my god i can't heal my allies well you get coal so quickly you might as well just use your ultimate that way right there's no reason not to another thing about your ultimate that's kind of dangerous like a little bit more risky is that you can't use your fade ability you can't cancel it while you do move quicker some of the good enemies will know how to play around that. You actually become much more vulnerable during your ultimate than if you were to not use it because you have your fade ability. Perfect examples of this are because Genjis with Dragon Blade can just see you use coal, not be scared of it because they're nanoed or whatever, and they can dash slash and kill you even though you have increased self-healing with your coal, it just won't matter. Um, another good example of that can maybe be a very well-placed Diva Bomb, or a Rhine Shatter, things like that. There are a bunch of things you really want to keep in mind before you use the ultimate, because good players will know how to cancel it. So yeah, in summary for Moira, when should you pick her? Well, she's extremely good on push and King of the Hill maps. That's when I really like to play her if Lucio isn't taken because she has a lot of survivability and there's not a lot of peeling going on in the game. So you're self-sustaining with your right-click heal, your fade ability, and all of the damage potential with getting those committed kills to maybe someone that's a little bit trickier for your allies to get. She's a great pick. I love to pick her, especially if I'm getting dove on by a lot of dive heroes because you can just fade away from them. But yeah, I think the big takeaways is min-max your resource of your left click. Make sure to try and use your heal orbs more than your damage orbs. Try to use that heal over time effect with your left click to try to get in a little bit of extra healing on everybody. Make sure that your left click isn't getting blocked by any barriers by the enemy team. Try to animation cancel before your ult and combine it with your orb. And make sure to jump with your fate ability so you can get a little bit of extra distance. Anyways guys, if you like this video, make sure to let me know what you think about it in the comments. If you have any questions, I will try to answer them. And let me know who you want to see next. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.